It's the KSO Show. This is Wednesday, uh, September, do you know? Off the top September 6th <laughs> no, or 7th? It's, it's one of the uh, two. It's 8th. Is it the 7th? 8th? Yeah, it's <laughs> September 8th. Actually, we just, we just <laughs> got 8th. done having a laugh about the whole Ed Orgeron thing. Yeah. For those that don't know, obviously this podcast won't be about that, but you know, he went at that UCLA <laughs> fan before the game, says, you know, we're going to beat that ass in your sissy blue shirt or along those lines, but he called it a sissy blue shirt and because of sissy blue ice that's in my bourbon right now. Yeah, there you go. And then, <laughs> uh, then they proceeded to lose the game and the UCLA football account now wrong. has the sissy blue with the, in their Twitter header. I mean, it is funny. Like the juxtaposition of Ed Ogeron and Chip Kelly, just face to face, two guys, you'd think Ed Ogeron wins that battle and they probably do. If it's actually a battle between two men, but in, on the gridiron, we saw we saw Chip Kelly's team come out on top. Yeah, no, that was a little bit off topic there <laughs> for the first minute. If 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 you hated it, you can you know never subscribe to us again. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you hated it, then uh, let us know. Tell us how much you hate us. I guess yes. But is. back to Kansas State football. They're one and a Wildcats just got done dispatching Stanford twenty four to seven. Our Wednesday podcast always talks about the next game. It's the yeah. and we look at the matchups as the Kansas State Wildcats will host. In a full house inside Bill Snyder Family Stadium for the first time in two years. Um, because of COVID, we didn't get that last year. They'll host the Southern Illinois Salukis. Yep. Pretty good ball club here. The number eight team in the country in the FCS. And they, you know, riddled Southeastern Missouri State. Mm-hmm. All I needed to hear was Coach talk to, Coach Kleiman talk this week, Skylar Thompson. Um, they're prepared for this game, and they've done a lot of studying, more studying than I could pr- probably ever do. And by the sounds of it, this team could be one of the better teams in the FCS. Kleiman literally said he thinks they're a top three team in the F- F- or FCS this season. And a national title contender. National title contender. Um, he said he put it on a good South Dakota team. What was that South Dakota team last year? I mean, he, he rattled off both Skylar Thompson and Chris Common, rattled off a bunch of things to be worried about with this FCS. Opponent. Yeah, they also set up uh, you know several examples of FCS teams have – that have defeated the FBS programs, and quite frankly, six of them happened this year. I mean, just last week we saw Montana just take it to number. Well, I guess not take it, but they defeated number a top twenty-five team in Washington. Mm-hmm. So any given any given Saturday, not any given Sunday, right now in college football, and the FCS is, you know, what it, it's we talk about parity in college football and a lack of parity in a lot of cases because the same teams are making the playoff. So while that gap up at the top of the FBS is probably widening, the kit, the get, the gap between everyone else in the FBS and the FCS is probably shrinking. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at, to be quite honest, but if we're talking matchups, I think w- one of the most important things for Kansas State this Saturday is probably going to be their defense. Can they uh, duplicate yeah. last week's performance? Because if you're talking about one thing that'll scare you. It's probably the Saluki offense. Their quarterback just threw for 400 yards and four yep. touchdowns. Yep, 400 yards, four touchdowns. Nick Baker, yep. And has, uh, I don't remember the pass catcher's name, but also has a dynamic pass catcher that they can go to as well. So th- this offense is not going to be to be taken lightly. It might even be a little more electrifying than what you saw from a Stanford a week yeah. ago, which is interesting to say. But like you said, FCS is coming a long way. More aerial. They'll throw it 60% of the time. thereabouts on average, maybe a little bit more even against K-State. Um, so I, I think that's where the matchup lies. Is yeah. Can Kansas State's pass defense duplicate last week's performance? And quite frankly, I think they, get, they got away with a little bit last week in the pass defense because – uh, while the numbers look good and the performance yeah. looks good and they nearly pitched a shutout of Stanford, I think some of it had to do with the Cardinal not capitalizing on some opportunities that were there in the passing game. Absolutely. A better quarterback could have made some of those tougher plays. Um, some of those also were schematics, like Spencer Trussell dropping in, dropping back really helped Russ East get that interception on that play against Stanford. But, yes, for the most part, when you're going up against a more dynamic uh, playmaker under center, you're – and you saw the performance that the defense put out against Stanford. The secondary wasn't the brightest unit. There was a few guys that I think played really well, but not every player was the sharpest. Um, and it's just a different team. I, I think there's a few ways you can look at it. They could get catched, caught off guard and, and allow this quarterback to really um, put it on them. Or you could see a team that maybe settles into more comfortability of what they will see the rest of the season. 
um, something they probably have been practicing a lot this offseason up until they really had to buckle down for Stanford. My bold, not so bold prediction is that they're definitely probably going to give up more points this week. There's there's quite an argument that the Southern Illinois offense, whether it's FCS or not, is probably yeah. better than the one they just saw against Stanford, mm-hmm. to be quite honest. Um, and, and I will say this, Southern Illinois, the way they go and, and the way, you know, the football, the game of football is now, they're probably going to get their yards. Yeah. And they're probably going to complete a lot of passes. That's just how football is. How much can you tighten up in the red zone? And that will be a big factor for K-State. And can they create opportunities um, for turning the ball over? Uh, turnovers and red zone, can when you start to squeeze, because teams are going to move the ball. That's just the way the football game of football is played now. Can you – produce turnovers can you really shrink the field and tighten up in the red zone that that'll be the key for kansas state defensively and 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 they just had a couple russ yeast had an interception as you pointed out tj smith tj was it tj was tj smith that dropped right in his hands oh yeah yeah yeah. it was an overthrow he was in the right spot at the Mm -hmm. right time so they had two against stanford and it will despite nick baker being really prolific with the ball in his hands at quarterback you know 400 yards four touchdowns he is the guy that does turn the ball over and that's what the K State's going to have to take mm-hmm. advantage of on this guy. Um, and they have they have the guys in the secondary to do it. But this will be the game of when we actually see if they can be dynamic in the secondary and find ways to stay with guys. We saw a lot of Justin Gardner on Saturday. I bet you see more Echo than you do uh, Justin Gardner. I mean, probably all three. But the point is, Echo didn't really even come in until later in the game and was, uh, you know brought up by Chris Kleiman as a guy that played really well. So the secondary is going to be key in this game, and they're going to have to stay tight on the guy. And even that sometimes might not be enough, considering the fact that this team likes to let it fly and guys are going to be open. Um, It's going to be a difficult game as far as that goes. But then again, you also have to hope on the flip side, you see a a much more inspired offense against what I would think is can't can't be – the defense that they saw against Stanford. Yeah, and offensively, I would imagine Kansas State's running game is probably going to be well schemed. Well, it's going to be what Southern Illinois prepares for. That they they their run defense wasn't great in Week One against Southeast Missouri State, despite you know the big win. They won forty seven twenty one. The run defense wasn't great, but Kansas State, I think they'll sell out against the K State run and make Kansas State pass. So I think we're going to see a pass offense to of the Wildcats. It'll have to be. They'll have to be productive and it'll have to be efficient for them to get the points that they need. Uh, bold, not so bold prediction. We're probably going to get, you know, a shootout to some extent, yeah. I believe, in Manhattan in the first packed house inside the bill in two years. I think there's potential for a little bit of a shootout. Not saying that it's going to go overboard because that'll the possessions will probably still be tempered. But I could see, you know, Kansas State scoring in the 30s, maybe the 40s. And I think Southern Illinois can still get in the 20s. I think they're dangerous enough to, to do that against the Wildcats. Mm-hmm. The next time you hear us, we'll probably – it might be me and Drew. It might be Flando and I. We'll, it'll depend on how we game plan that. But it'll be Thursday. It'll be tomorrow or today, depending on when you are listening to this. And we'll probably be discussing what we hear from defense coordinator Joe Klinerman as he speaks on Thursday at his press conference and also offensive coordinator Courtney Messingham. On Friday, you'll hear our game preview. That'll be Flanders and I as well. So, for Grant, I am D.Y. Derek Young on the beat. Tell your, your f- friends about KSO.